Now, I've talked a bit tonight about fear and the way it's used to push onerous responses to the pandemic and justify political decisions. The same tactic is used, as you know, when it comes to climate change. And now teachers are upping the ante. Primary school students are being urged to write activist letters and lecture their parents on climate change in a new guide issued by the Primary English Teaching Association of Australia. The authors describe the book as a call to action. Ten-year-olds are told to lecture their parents in sustainability, including using less petrol. That'll come as a big shot to students who are going to have to use their shoe leather to get to school instead of sitting in mum or dad's uh, big fuel-guzzling four-wheel drive. Children are also told coal-fired power plants need to be phased out. Good luck charging their mobile phones and playing on their Xboxes, eh? 13-year-old students are advised to pester their principals into forming a climate change student active group, action group. It sounds a bit like those groups at the ABC that they failed to ban. Anyway, the, uh, the authors have even put together a template letter so students don't have to think about all this for themselves. They can write to Dear Mr Ashwin or whoever their head... head master or principal is. We're worried about the future and how climate change is going to impact on our lives. We see documentaries and news items, probably on the ABC, that paint a bleak picture of Australia in the coming decades. It's hard not to feel overwhelmed. Instead, we're determined to use Greta Thunberg as our inspiration and get together with other students to do things that really make a difference. Oh, my. Dr Kevin Donnelly is Senior Research Fellow with Australian Catholic University. He's been writing and speaking on activism in the classroom for decades. He's got a new book out on political correctness and cancel culture and he joins me now. Good to talk to you, Kevin. This is just too much, isn't it? They just push it too far, <laughs> shoving this stuff. This is, this is ideological preaching to our students. They're supposed to teach them how to read and write. <sighs> A lot of parents wouldn't recognise uh, what's happening in the classroom anymore. I mean, uh, I'm a bit older than you, Chris, but when I went to school, uh, we were taught uh, by professionals, uh, whether it was English or mathematics or in primary school, whether it was how to read, how to write, how to uh, add up, subtract. It was very straightforward. I mean, teachers were there to teach a particular subject. Now, as you say, it's all about indoctrination. Uh, in the jargon uh, of today, it's all about student engagement, student activism. So really what's happening now is that the cultural left has taken control of the classroom. Now, whether it's history or whether it's even mathematics, uh, for example, has uh, suffered. So parents, as I say, would not really appreciate how much things have changed. Yeah, it's, it's a terrible problem and uh, it's a distraction, if nothing else, for the students. I want to show this cartoon by our good friend Johannes Leek. I think it's from your book, uh, but this highlights the problem brilliantly because we've got the expert at the drawing board doing all sorts of climate projections uh, with all sorts of scientific and mathematical calculations. Impressive work, Hopkins, uh, says the principal, but let's <laughs> wait for the experts in March, the children. This is the trouble, Kevin. They're taught, actually, that their opinions or their fears matter more than what they learn. Yeah, you're right, Chris, and uh, one of the uh, last year, as you know, the Australian Education Union, many of the subject associations, actually tell students, primary and secondary, to go on strike on the Friday to wag school when we have these rolling strikes. And when uh, on the news one night I saw 10, 12-year-old girls actually crying and saying to one another, we can't have children, we can't have babies. It's all about fear. It's all about indoctrinating these young kids with the idea that by 2030, if we don't have zero emissions, the whole world will end. So no wonder we're going backwards in international testing in mathematics and science, because what's happening in the classroom has nothing to do with education. Yeah, now, you've also focused on critical race theory, which is uh, starting to get a worrying hold, certainly in some of our edu educational institutions. Pauline Hanson's been pushing back against it, but you've highlighted how in Florida, the Republican governor in Florida, has actually started to get rid of this stuff from schools there? It was a very positive uh, uh, story when I read about this earlier in the week. There are three or four American states now that have actually legislated to tell government 
not to, or rather the education department, not to use our critical race theory, which is all about making young white kids feel guilty about being white. It's all about saying that Western culture, Western society, whether it's England, America or Australia, and it comes out of the Black Lives Matter movement. It teaches young kids that society is racist, that uh, non-white people are always disadvantaged. But I think the tide is beginning to turn. And you might know, Chris, uh, you mentioned Pauline Hanson. In the Senate recently, they voted to tell the uh, Scott Morrison government to take it out of the national curriculum. And so that will be a challenge for uh, what is supposed to be a conservative government. I hope they're listening. Indeed, Kevin. Thanks so much for joining us with those insights again. My pleasure.